You needed the spirit and not the flesh. Unity, I repeat, unity will never be found in the flesh, whether this be skin, race, cultures, creed, or ethnic group of gender, male, female. The true unity lays outside the framework of all these and is established, held, and preserved by God himself in the area of the human quickened spirit by an act performed by the Father of us all before the foundation of this messed up world caused by the fall of humanity to the first couple that hit this planet recorded in the book of Genesis for all to see. Hold this truth down with a lie that we as a people could do what only God himself could accomplish correctly agrees and certifies all. Hold this truth down and we will never see true justice and peace we all seek. It is his peace that passes all this misunderstanding that we see in this world today. Peace. Preserve the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Ephesians 4 3. More on unity in diversity. I've touched upon this in my other videos. I want to bring some more out on this matter of unity in diversity. Most of the time we're trying to create something that's already there. Unity. Paul the Apostle writes in Ephesians 4.3, Endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This peace found in this unity is said to be a peace that passes our understanding, a peace that is not as the world thinks peace. How do we come to experience this? It is written that it can only be experienced seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Again, in the Greek text, is expressed as something that already is and can be experienced here and now. Experience you did. Put that there. Galatians chapter 6, 15 to 16. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision veils anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. As many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy. Upon the Israel of God. Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's already been done. Just matter of working it out. Ephesians 2 6. And has, past tense, raised us up together. And made us sit together. Where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Again. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ascending and descending. As it should have been. Had Adam not fallen. Was one for us all. Christ won this back for us. Now. One day. For the last time. We ascend and remain forever. Right now we can ascend, descend, ascend, descend. We don't have to dig him up or pull him down. He's near us. He's in us. The kingdom of God is in you. Ah, oh, that would be another whole video of that. Sitting in heavenly places, or as I've seen it, outside the box. Our air hoses punch through the ceiling of this experience. We ascend and descend as the need arises. That's where life, peace, and unity are. Not in the flesh. I put out a couple of good videos. I give them diagrams of how we can ascend. Had that enough on, we would have a problem. We would ascend there, get the answer, and come back with it. Call it an ascended mode. That's another way. Ascended mode. I'll be bringing that out. What's the ascended mode? Sitting in heaven of Christ Jesus. Call it an ascended mode when you are out. Some might see you as being spaced out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on. I, I used to do that quite a bit on the job. At least thank God I had a working partner that understood where I was coming from. I used to share a lot of this stuff with her. And she said, well, are you here? <laughs> are you back? I would get into that, and as I would send and get the answers to my problems in my life, I would jot it down on paper. She knew I was back because I would stop and put back... No, I'm not so far out, but I can't, didn't know what was going on around me. 
I could easily be, God would bring me back. Those of the New Age were called a trance. Uh, I don't call it trance. There's, there's satanic elements in that element of a trance. I prefer ascended mode. Peter was in ascended mode when he saw the sheep fall down in heaven. Remember? In the book of Acts. Where he was, uh, had, after death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus Christ was sometimes after that, that he still had problems with Judaism. And he couldn't eat meat off the idols. So he couldn't eat meat, meat off the idols. Or he couldn't eat pork and uh, the Jewish diet. He wouldn't go to preach to the Gentiles. The guy wanted him to go preach to a Gentile individual. So he down pulls down a sheet and peers up in the roof in a trance and he sees the sheep pulled down to heaven. All the so-called unclean animals on there and God said, eat. And he says, not so, Lord. I never since my youth I've never eaten these things. They're unclean. He said, why do you call them clean what I've called clean? Go. And at that time, individuals had showed up and said that Cornelius, a Gentile centurion, was told by an angel to send your servants to find Peter, and he would give you the word of God. So that's when Peter, first time, first encounter with the Gentiles. You know, later on, Paul keeps his, Paul's whose whole ministry was to the Gentile, gets him to see it clear. Well, we shift gears to there, does then not hear, then shift gears back again. Not hooking up with some demon spirits in the box, and that's what I meant by the world's new age idea of trance, but outside the box, in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. What I have offered in most of my teachings, for once we came, uh, rights of the unfallen Adam, and now this idea of unity and diversity, which is going to be coming out, is not a matter of heaven or hell if you don't agree with what I share. It comes down to you so you might gain some gold, silver, precious stones on the foundation of Christ and his accomplishments mentioned by Paul, the, the apostle in Acts, 1 Corinthians, or 1, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15. You know, there's no other foundation but laying that which was laid, which was Christ Jesus upon that foundation built wood, hand, stubble, gold, silver, precious stones, and all this work to be tried. The wood, hand, stubble will be burned up, the gold, silver, precious stone will endure, being tested by fire, yet man will be saved, yet be saved as by fire. You know, you're saved. It's not a matter of heaven or hell. If what I share, or others, if it is truly coming from the Father to you, it would make up this gold, silver, and precious stones. Thus will stand the test of fire. If not, if I'm sharing here, it ain't of God, you know, it's just my scrolly thinking. If not, it would be wood, hay, and stubble, thus burned up, Yet still salvation is sure because of Christ our foundation. His work, his faith work, not mine. Yet note, if what I share with you is from the Lord, if rejected by you, well, if I share, if I would reject something God's trying to share to me through another individual, another vessel. If they, if I share with you is from the Lord, if rejected by you, you will suffer loss for its rejection and still inherit the kingdom yet again. If the foundation is rejected, that's different. It's an eternal matter. Thus, all is lost. There's no other foundation be laid that which was laid. Paul said, Christ. By sharing with you the all potential of God, my sharing with you the all potential of God will give you a better understanding of the meaning and purpose of this experience. That's what comes out in that series. In rights of the unfallen, it will give you insights of what rights were gained, regained through Christ's accomplishment for us here now. We need this now. Not in a kingdom where we definitely will have rights and powers. No. Through us, meaning God's power working and not latent subconscious powers, something I did with my video, Warns of the Cult, and the Shadow of His Power. In unity and diversity, I reveal beyond any New Age secular humanist or religious ecumenical approach to a true unity held and preserved for us before the foundation of the world. I will sometime in the future incorporate these writings in the ultimate of God calling the Song of the Beloved. In my book, The Devil Scarecrow, I learned to hear and learning to hear God's voice, you would discover that there has always been this element of evil 
that does not want you to hear from God one-on-one. -on -one. You can be as religious as you want. The devil doesn't care. But if you seek to hear from God one-on-one, -on -one, the devil will come against you and many times will even use well-meaning Christian brothers to block you. Those who feel that God no longer speaks to us. Well, this is only one of the many devil scarecrows that seek to scare you away from gleaming the harvest of hearing from God through Christ in you. Hope and unity. This is not an article that goes along with this whole video. It's a matter of unity. Sitting watching human efforts on YouTube bring about hope and some kind of unity. Not realizing that this hope and unity that they seek has already been established and held, preserved, where no so-called human efforts can mess it up. Where is that in the Bible? Ephesians 4.3. Now we'll repeat this in these other articles or whatever. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Endeavoring to keep, preserve, the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Imagine that. Kenneth Weiss, a Greek scholar, explaining the Greek tense of this verse, says that this unity spoken of in this text isn't something we create. It is something that is already there. Past complete act with present result. I mean, it was something signed, sealed, and finished before the war began. Now, I, I don't bring that. Greek tenses bring that. You're not going to get that in your average reading of uh, King James. It is something that is already there. We are not endeavoring to create unity. We are letting our ideas and human efforts to create it go and embracing something that is already there. Now you got to see it. If you don't see it, like I said, you've got to be in heaven and praise Christ Jesus to see this. You can't see it here. All you see is disunity, disharmony of this world and human efforts that come in and fail, come in and fail. As long as we neglect seeing what God has already done, and go about seeking to create our idea of peace and unity we will never see here in this experience. The further humanity gets away from believing that God had already did it all, the worse it will get. We're heading for perplexity, no way out. Human pride and arrogance blocks our ever facing this truth. We want it accomplished by us without the assistance of an unseen God. There lies the problem. God is considered unseen, and his world around us has overwhelming reality is clouding him out, causing us to dwell only on that scene. Try and fail, yeah, try and fail. I have been screaming the same message for as long as I can remember, this message of the seen versus that unseen. Even my latest emails, your question from you, your answers to the questions I've got from the Lord over the weeks and related to this matter of our overwhelming reality. That to those who have had at least a glimpse of what is truly real, no, it isn't as real as no, it isn't as real as well makes it out to be. Now let me change that real quick. No, it's supposed to be Kagan of Duggan. No, it isn't as real as the world makes it out to be. Yet we all can relate to how a time they can appear real, real enough to even just distract us from the truth. I have taught and wrote about this. Sharing how I believe God set this experience up for us all and allowed good times, bad times to enter the picture to have this life qualify as a true experience. Without the opposite, would it not have been what we would be needed to accomplish God's ultimate intention for our being born here? The problem was that an evil entered this experience, pushing what God had originally intended to the extreme. I've written about this, it comes out in my ultimate intention of God. The extremes of evil, trying to keep you trapped in this world. With evil doing this, God at times also must take extreme measures to correct this. Then he gets lame blasted for being cruel and real. Well, sometimes love and reality is a harsh and joyful thing compared to love and dream. You know, if you see someone heading for traffic, a car is coming, and I mean, you run out there and grab that person to avoid being hit by that car and them not seeing it. Well, they're going to kind of fight you on that, and then they will be hitting you. And then you point to the car, and they realize, my God, thank you. Thank you for saving me. People don't say it. These above three paragraphs set the stage for a rather long article. 
Well, it comes out my other videos. And now finishing up to add my insights off the very same questions that I asked all of you several days ago. I got him asking about the sense, did they ever fear a sensation of reality? How overwhelming it can be at times. You know, we got to share our faults with one for our own benefit. Oh, I don't have no problems. <laughs> Sorry, then you go off and you ain't got no problems. Well, I just let things play out. You'll find out. You got as many problems as I got. There's no temptation, but te such is common to all men. God prepare a way of escape that you might endure. Flee it out. Him that wouldn't think when I said Paul knew what he's talking about. There, there's Nick. Well, I don't have no problems. Well, that comes out in other articles I've written. If you don't have no problems, I mean, you think you're perfect? Everybody's going up with this honky donkey, honky dory. <laughs> One guy called it honky donkey. It's honky dory. Yeah. You know, Life isn't hunky donkey. You have trials and tribulations. Jesus is even one. In this world, you have tribulation. There's ways to diminish that tribulation, which comes out again in the altar, tensions of God, uh, uh, learning to hear God's voice, and all the other videos and series I brought out. Now, I touch upon this usually. Yeah, I get accused of being repetitious. Well, repetition is good for us, especially if you're not listening, because you may not catch the first time, you catch it the second time. So, uh, that's just one more piece to this whole uh, thing about uh, unity and diversity.